Okay, question for you. If, if Matthew had Mark before him, and scholars, most scholars believe that 606 of, Matthew, of Mark's 661 verses found their way into Mark. Give or in, take a verse. In, into Matthew, okay. So here is Matthew, who you believe was an eyewitness. He was at the Last Supper. If Matthew was at the Last Supper, why did he copy from Mark, who wasn't, the description of the Last Supper? Heavens, when I write up events in which I have participated, I inevitably try to get all of the stuff written by other people who were there or who had immediate contact with people who were there in order to incorporate that as best I can. That's the whole point of getting a comprehensive picture. Uh, Matthew, and Luke makes the point that, that he was so careful uh, in his own presentation of Jesus that he wanted to be sure that he had covered all of the other materials that were of importance. There's no difficulty in doing this uh, as long as you don't uh, try to uh, misalign or mishandle the material you're working with. Let me, let me put uh, Luke's statement on the board so we can actually see what the case is here. This is just uh, Luke chapter 1, uh, 1 through 4. Luke writes, many, which is interesting, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, namely the earthly career of Jesus, just as they were handed down to us. So he's not the first guy. It, it, he had stuff coming down to him by those who from the first were eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses, he said, gave this information to him. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also for me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So it seems that he is saying that he's not the only one. He is drawing from other accounts, but he also checked them out because he wants to make sure that the account is certain. Now, is there anything wrong with that? Well, I'd like to go back just briefly to, to yes, Matthew go ahead. because there's there's a difference between Mark and Luke, who were not eyewitnesses, to Matthew and John, who some, some scholars claim were. And I just, for the people watching this program, you know, ask yourself this question. If Matthew did write the book, which we call Matthew, and in the original text it's not titled Matthew, we put that title on. If Matthew did write that, and if he was at the Last Supper and a hundred other events, then why did he copy word for word what Mark, who we know was not there, wrote? I mean, if ah, I... But, but hang on here. Mark was a companion of Peter. So what right. Mark is doing is providing Peter's perspective on this. And wouldn't Matthew be very much interested in what the chief of the apostles had to say about but those same saying, events? What you're saying is that when you do your autobiography and you're writing about your wedding, that you would rather have the usher at the wedding provide the information than you. As a matter of fact, when I have written up events in my own career, I have been very careful to get a hold of even the newspaper accounts of those same events, and I frequently cite them. What I want is to get the most comprehensive picture I possibly can. I can only be faulted if I pervert the data that I take from other people. And here again, the burden of proof is going to rest on you to okay. show that Matthew, in using Mark's material, if he did, uh, actually perverted it. Okay. Now, the fact that there is variation among these materials uh, is not the question. You say yourself in your article that one expects this kind of thing in reporting events. The important thing is the substance, what it actually has to say about the cruciality of an event such as the resurrection. 